Hello everyone and welcome to Machine Learning, Robotics and Mechatronics Tutorials. In this tutorial we explain how to install and use OpenCV and USB camera on Raspberry Pi 5 and how to implement and run in real time a simple image processing algorithm. Over here you can see a brief demonstration of what you will learn in this video tutorial. The left panel, that is the panel shown over here, shows video frames that are captured in real time by using OpenCV and USB camera. The video is captured frame by frame and displayed on the computer screen by using OpenCV. The right panel, that is this panel over here, shows a video after a Gaussian blur filter is applied to the image. There is almost no visible delay between the two panels, that is, between the two videos. That is, everything is performed in real time from the human observer perspective. In fact, our human brain and eyes are not fast enough to notice the delay between the two videos. Over here, you can see the Python code that produces these two videos. Okay, let's start with explanations. Since some of the viewers of this channel are not familiar with OpenCV and computer vision, for those of you who are not familiar with OpenCV, OpenCV contains a collection of algorithms that serve as the backbone for image processing and computer vision algorithms. That is, many computer vision libraries integrate OpenCV and use OpenCV algorithms. OpenCV is very important for robotics and mechatronics applications. On the other hand, Raspberry Pi 5 is a low-cost computer and a computing platform that is powerful enough to run control, estimation, signal processing, machine learning and computer vision algorithms. As such, it is a good platform and a relatively low-cost platform for developing and testing robotic and mechatronic systems. Over here, that is on this image, you can see my experimental setup. It consists of Raspberry Pi 5, which has 8GB RAM. In addition to Raspberry Pi 5, I also attached to Raspberry Pi an SSD. And here is my USB camera. That is, I'm capturing images by using a simple USB camera. I'm not using a specialized camera for Raspberry Pi 5. To follow and implement this tutorial, you need the following hardware and software prerequisites. First of all, you need Raspberry Pi 5 with at least 4 GB RAM. Ideally, you should use Raspberry Pi 5 with 8 GB RAM. Then, you need to have Linux Ubuntu 24.04 installed on Raspberry Pi 5. I have created a separate video tutorial explaining how to install Linux Ubuntu on Raspberry Pi 5. A link to that tutorial will be provided in the description below this video. And here is one very important comment. Some users like to install the official operating system that's designed for Raspberry Pi by the Raspberry Pi company. However, I don't suggest you to do that, especially if you want to work with robotics. My suggestion is to install Linux Ubuntu. Then, you will need a USB camera. Any USB camera will do the work. Then you will also need Python. However, Python 3.12 comes as an integral part of Linux Ubuntu 24.04. Consequently, you will not need to install Python. Okay, let's start with the installation procedure. First of all, open a command prompt or a terminal. To do that, click over here and search for terminal. Here it is. Now, I'm going to resize this window such that you can see the commands that I'm typing and such that, that I can follow the manual shown over here. The first step is to verify that we have the proper Linux distribution. To do that we need to type this. And as you can see over here I'm using Ubuntu 24.04. 
Next, we need to verify that Linux Ubuntu can recognize the USB camera. Namely, attach the camera to the USB port of Raspberry Pi 5 and in the command prompt type this. Enter your password and here it is. You can see that my USB camera is recognized. The next step is to make sure that we can actually take images by using our camera. For that purpose, we need to use a built-in program that comes with Linux Ubuntu 24.04. The built-in program is called Snapshot. So click here and search for Snapshot or search for camera. It really doesn't matter. The program will pop up. And over here, if the camera is properly installed, you will be able to use the camera. However, what you can see over here, no camera found. Now, I will explain this issue since this issue is very important. Sometimes this software, as you can see over here, for some reason doesn't recognize the camera. And this might be a bug in this software. So I'm going to close this software and I'm going to try the second option. I'm going to try to install Cheese. Cheese is a program that's used in Ubuntu 22.04, that is in the previous version of Linux Ubuntu, for capturing images. So I will first type this to update and upgrade my system. This might take a while. And after this command, we need to install SnapD. So let's be patient over here. Since if you didn't run this command for, for, for example, several weeks, it might even take several minutes to update and upgrade everything. Then after that, let's type this. And finally, let's install Cheese. Okay. Now, let's test the camera. So let's click here and search for cheese. Here it is. And over here, cheese should open and cheese should be able to read the camera images as you can see over here. Good. Let's proceed further. The next step is optional. Namely, you need to have an editor in order to create Python files. The simplest possible editor is gedit. You can install gedit by typing this. Now, you can simply use gedit by saying, for example, gedit file1.py, for example. And over here, you can type Python file. That's it. In this video tutorial, I'm not going to use gEditor, namely because gEditor is a little bit primitive. Instead, I'm using Visual Studio Code. In fact, I created a separate video tutorial explaining how to install Visual Studio Code in Linux Ubuntu and on Raspberry Pi 5. A link will be provided in the description below. Let's proceed further. The next step is to verify that you have Python installed on your system. As mentioned previously, if you have properly installed Linux Ubuntu on Raspberry Pi 5, Python 3.12 will be installed. However, it's still a good idea to verify that you have Python. And if I type Python double dash version, you should see that I have Python 3.12.3. Note one very important thing. OpenCV works, I think, with Python 3.8, 3.9, 3.10, 3.11, and 3.12. It still does not work with 3.13, that is, with the newest version of Python. Next, we need to make sure that the command for creating Python virtual environments is installed. To install this command, we need to type this. Let me now select this, copy and paste over here. Now you can see that there is a small delay while I'm 
pasting everything. This is mainly because I'm currently recording my screen and this consumes some CPU power. Okay, the next step is to create the workspace folder and to create the Python virtual environment. So let's learn how to do that. First of all, let's go to the home folder. Then let's create in the home folder a folder called test camera. Then let's navigate to test camera folder and inside of this folder we are going to create a Python virtual environment. First of all, I need to create the Python virtual environment and then to activate it. To create Python virtual environment you need to type this Python 3 with an option M, then you need to call the command venv and you need to name your virtual environment. In my case the name is environment1, which is short env1. So let's run this and after doing that, we need to activate the Python virtual environment. To activate the Python virtual environment, we need to execute this command. So let's do that. So let's select this part over here and let's execute it. Good. Now our Python virtual environment is activated and we can install OpenCV in this environment. To install OpenCV, we need to type this, pip install OpenCV Python. So let's execute this command. Here it is. This will install complete OpenCV as well as NumPy. And then we can type pip list to see all the packages. We can see NumPy and OpenCV. The next step is to write a brief Python code that will test everything. So let's do that. To do that, I'm going to start Visual Studio Code. Again, most likely you don't have Visual Studio Code on your system and you need to install it. If you don't want to install it, you can use gEditor to create a Python file. If you want to use Visual Studio Code, install it by using the instructions provided in the video tutorial given in the description below. So let's start Visual Studio Code. And over here, I'm going to paste the content of the file that I wrote previously. So here's the file. I'm just going to open it and I'm going to paste its content in order to save time. Control C, then let's go here. Let's create a new file, file, new file. Let's call the file as test1.py. And then let's save it in the workspace folder and let's paste the code over here and let's explain this code line by one line. First of all, we need to import NumPy. Then we need to import OpenCV. Then over here, we need to create our camera object. To do that, we call cv2.videocapture and over here, we need to assign or better to say to write the camera device number. This number can be 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. It's not an arbitrary number. Namely, Linux Ubuntu assigns to every video device a certain number. In our case, it's 0. To find the exact number, go back to the terminal, open a new terminal, and inside of this terminal, you need to execute this command over here. Here it is. And this command will list all the video devices on my system. I don't know why I have video 19, 20, 21 until 37. The most important thing are video 0 and video 1. In my case, the camera is video 0. And consequently, over here, I have 0. If 0 doesn't work, that is, if Python rises an exception, then change this number to 1 or two, three, etc. So it will require some trial and error in your case. Then over here, I'm asking if the camera is opened, then I'm printing the message, otherwise could not open the camera. While true, this is an infinite loop, I'm doing the following. I'm reading the frame from my camera, I'm checking the success. If I was not able to read the frame, then I'm printing this message and I'm breaking this while loop. Otherwise, let's see what I'm doing here. I'm applying a Gaussian blur to the recorded frame 
frame is recorded by camera.read. Over here I'm specifying the kernel size and I'm specifying an additional parameter that's not important for this video tutorial. Then what I'm doing over here, I'm simply stacking two frames next to each other. That is the original frame, that's a raw frame recorded by the camera, and the processed frame to which Gaussian blur filter is applied. I'm stacking these two frames horizontally next to each other and I'm creating a matrix and then I'm using CV2 image show function to plot the image, that is to plot both frames next to each other and that's it. And over here if the user presses Control C I'm going to close all the windows once everything is executed, I'm releasing camera, that is, I'm stopping and I'm destroying all the windows. That's it. Simple as that. Let's now test this code. To test this code, you first need to tell to Visual Studio Code to use the Python interpreter inside of the virtual environment. To do that, press and hold Control, Shift and P, then search for Python select interpreter, here it is, then make sure that you're selecting the interpreter from the virtual environment and then finally you can execute the code by pressing over here. And let's see what's happening. The camera is successfully opened and you can see the camera images. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to lift everything because the camera was below and you can see the videos over here looks beautiful looks amazing okay that's all for today and thanks for watching